All right, we're with Bill Neville of Nevillism Coaching Academy, and Bill, would you like to tell the audience a little bit about yourself? About myself? Well, I could go for a while. Um, well, I coach volleyball. Um, I've been doing it for 30 some odd years, five years maybe. Um, uh, I've had experience about it at every level, uh, from coaching uh, three as a part of staffs of three different Olympic teams, one of which won a gold medal. Uh, I've coached both the men's and the women's uh, teams of the U.S. I've coached college volleyball. I've coached um, both men and women also. Um, I've coached juniors. I've done, I don't know how many coaching clinics. Um, I'm currently the uh, the National Commissioner of Coaching Education for USA Volleyball, and I still am a consultant with the U.S. team, which as a gig I should have thought about since when you're a consultant you can offer advice and never have to answer for it. So <laughs> that's been kind of a good deal. <laughs> you mentioned that you've coached both men and women. Is there a big difference between the two? Well, that's a question I get asked a lot. And at first I'd tell you no. And uh, I remember one time I thought I was really clear when we played when I was coaching Washington, and we were playing down in Long Beach State. And um, when I had to try to look for the men's restroom, the ones that were close were locked. I had to go about four floors to find one that was open. That would have been the, at that time I'd have said that would have been the greatest difference is the challenge of finding an open men's restroom. Um, but there are differences, um, and it's it took me a long time to figure that out. Uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, and I think it's it's a natural kind of thing. Um, both men and women are very competitive, but they're competitive in different ways. And a great book is uh, is written by Kathy DeBoer, who is the president of the ABCA, and it's called uh, Gender and Competition: The Difference of the Way Men uh, and Women Work and Play, or something. Like that kind of gag it, but it's, it's something like that. But she articulated uh, off a kind of a challenge from a guy about um, the differences in the way men and women compete. Not that they're, one competes more than the other, but rather they just approach it differently. And I, it's true. And I think with guys, for example, they uh, don't mind the spotlight individually. Now, I'm taking volleyball now. And I mean, if if and they don't mind being envied by their teammates or others because they're good, whereas girls and women are way more cooperative. And I could tell you a bunch of stories in this, but that they would rather be accepted by their group and as a peer as opposed to being forced to stand out. Now there's exceptions. I've had uh, I've had some players that didn't care at all. Their ego said, no, it's fine, I'm the best there is, and that's the way it is. Uh, but it's generally, you know, they would rather share the, the glory with teammates. And not that men don't, but they also don't mind being in the spotlight. It's, that's an oversimplification, but it, it does, there's a, it does have, um, uh, a, without question, a, a mindset to it that is different. And, um, the other thing is, I think that with when when you coach girl, when you coach guys, you know you can single a guy on practice one with for compliment as well as okay, you need to work on this. You got to do this, this, and this, and they'll they'll go okay. But you got to be careful with that with girls. They don't want to even if you say, hey, that's fabulous. You're standing the greatest thing. If some of them will go, ah, you know, because they're they're afraid that they might be judged by their teammates, whereas same thing with criticism. So if I, if I want to correct or, or work with a, a, a kids in here, which are primarily girls in our gym, is that I make sure it's done off to the side and just one-on-one. -on -one. You know, those are the, there's just some of those differences. Being the team sport that volleyball is, do you think that gives the girls an advantage? <laughs> That's another great question that I've, I've been asked. You know, it works its way out both ways. Um, the uh, clearly volleyball is, and I'm biased, but I think I'm right too. And that is, volleyball is the best team sport there is. I mean, it, it because of the, it's a rebound sport. You're so you so rely on teammates. Uh, you can't really have a star. That's why I think the media has trouble covering it, is because uh, you know in basketball 
you can have somebody score 50 points, your team can get killed, but you got a great shooter or something. Uh, whereas volleyball, if you have a great hitter, you know, they really shine in warm-ups if you look at it that way. But boom, you know, they're bouncing the ball over. But if they're going to be good in the game, they've got to have somebody that can pass the ball and a setter that can deliver the ball uh, to make that work. So there's a different kind of a mindset of a, there's this blend. So that does lend itself to the girls' game. And uh, uh, that they are this, it's a cooperative thing. The guys, however, also, uh, how would I say, the, the guys would, um, I mean, they, you know, they love the final contact, the big, you know, I mean, serving is the only one. You know, there's a guy on the men's national team right now that has a jump serve that he, that's been clocked on the radar at 87 miles an hour. He kind of stands out. But that's the one skill that somebody can really just individually completely control. Whereas he's also a fairly good hitter, and setters are smart enough to get the ball to. But it's it's way more connected. But they find ways to 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 individualize it a bit more. Um, but they also, I mean, it's not like it's so independent. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, there's a lot of gray area. But clearly, yeah, volleyball lends itself to the more group cooperative, if you will. Being a coaching academy, some college coaches refer to the level of, of instruction that girls in particular mm -hmm. get prior to the time that they actually enter into college. And it's almost, the inference is almost that they start from scratch almost all over again. You mean the college coaches? Yeah. Well... Is that a male or a female coach? That's a male See, coach. See, the male would go, well, oh, I'm going to have to take charge of this. That's, that also would be a male kind of a thing, I think. You know, I mean, obviously, the, the, if the girls mm -hmm. didn't have some modicum of, uh, of skill, they wouldn't even have been considered for this. So, obviously, they don't start from scratch. That's, not a, that's just not right. Um, uh, but there are certain... Well, I mean, preparation, well, here's the difference. People say, what's, what's the difference between coaching men's and women, which we talked about, or male, female? And, and, and I, I kind of summarize it like this, is girls are taught how to execute the game. Boys are taught how to play. And what I mean by that is, is that there are, I, I think personally girls are horribly overcoached when they're young. Okay? Every, you know, I'm, how many footwork patterns are there? you got two feet. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I'll give you an example. When I was a technical director of USA Volleyball, we, we had a, uh, our, our national junior teams, youth teams, were, were training at the University of Colorado. And they were training at the same time. And uh, so what, I, I would go and watch both. And in, over on the girls' side, they were scrimmaging. And the men were, the boys were scrimmaging as well on the other. But so I was in this gym. And the girls were, you know, passing. They were playing. And they were passing serve like you know, normal. And this one kid shanks it. And, I mean, two coaches came out and said, oh, you got to have the platform this way. And you got to, you know, do this and do that. And, and, and she was, this is in the middle of a game. And, uh, I mean, not during the course of play, but, yeah. you know, because it was scrimmage. They could stop and do that stuff. And, and so they, they worked on that technique. And then... So, and I never thought anything about it. It's coaching. They're coaching the kid and, and, and so on. So I drift over to the men's side or the boys' side. Same thing. Some, some guy shanks the ball up into next week. And, and the coach doesn't get off his chair. He goes, pass the ball. You can't play this game unless you pass the ball. That was the instruction. And, and the kid looked over and said, I got the next one. And, they, and he did. And off they go. You know, I, I mean, obviously they, they coach more than that. But that's uh, but every time mm -hmm. a, a girl, I don't think even in our culture is allowed to explore the game. Literally, I would have come in, kids come in this gym. It still happens. Is a girl come in and say, "Can I jump serve?" And my response is, "I don't know. I've never seen you do it." In other words, in other words, she was asking me permission, and I go, "In this gym, this is a, this is a place you learn in this gym." You want to jump it up? Go ahead. Let's see how you do it. I've never seen you do it. And I think she tried it and hit the wall or something. But I said, okay, but let's work on it. And we, you know, I'm a strong believer as you give information as it is needed. Okay? There's a lot of girls that get all this information without anybody even watching them see what they know now. 
And, and so as a result, there's this overemphasis on you've got to have your feet just this way. And, you, and when you move from here to there, this is your footwork and, and so on. So these girls will take that seriously. I mean, they're very coachable for sure. And they'll work constantly on this instead of playing the game. Okay? Whereas guys will say, get there. Get there. I'll see how you get there. you got to get there before the ball, get balanced, get stopped, set the thing. And they'll go, okay. And, they'll, you know, if they, and now, if they don't do it, then you give them instruction. You start adding information that they need. If there's something, a glitch in there. But, and I'm, I'm kind of partial to that way of, of allowing somebody to explore the game a little bit, you know, and then start adding information, you know, as it's needed. There's so much talk now about beach volleyball mm -hmm. and, and um, obviously from the Olympics and things of that sure. nature, big spectator sport. Is there a lot of differences in the basic fundamentals of the two games? Well, yes and no. Uh, they're two different games. I mean, that's what people get confused about. I mean, beach volleyball and six-player volleyball are two different games. And, um, uh, you know, the tactics are a bit different, and the rules are as well. And also the interpretation of ball handling skills. So you'll see it on the beach, for example, you'll see a lot more bump setting and stuff because they call the hands a lot tighter. And, um, and well, there's other things, too. And, of course, the, the venue that they're playing on you know, modifies it as you're staggering around in, you know, knee-deep sand. It's not quite that deep. But, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, different things. You'll see players on the beach, for example, just, you know, dive after a ball because they know they're landing in sand, where you have to have those techniques because you have to pursue, excuse me, the gym as well, but you've got to teach how to land and, and survive without getting maimed. 